President, please be seated. Veuillez vous asseoir. The court is now in session. Je déclare l'audience ouverte. Today, the chamber continues to hear the, the remaining testimony of this witness, and we'll hear the testimony of a reserve witness, that is true TCW887, Ms. Sakobote, please report the attendance of the parties and other individuals at today's proceedings. Des parties et personnes présentes à l'audience aujourd'hui. Graffier. Mr. President, for today's proceedings, Monsieur le Président, all parties to this case are present. Toutes les parties au procès sont présentes. Mr. Nunji is present in the holding cell Monsieur downstairs. He has waived his right to be present in the courtroom. His waiver has been delivered to the greffier. The witness who is to continue his testimony today, that is Mr. Utsay, is present and ready in the courtroom. We also have a reserve witness, that is through TCW887. The witness confirms that to his best knowledge, he has no relationship by blood or by law to any of the two accused. There is no G and Q some pawn or to any of the civil parties admitted in this case. The witness will take an oath before the Iron Club statue before his appearance. President, thank you. The chamber now decides on the request by Nun Chi. The chamber has received a waiver from the accused Nun Chi dated 3rd June 2015, which notes that due to his health, that is, backache and headache, he cannot sit or concentrate for long, and in order to effectively participate in the future proceedings, he requests to waive his presence in the on the 3rd June 2015 hearing. He advises that his counsel advised him about the consequence of this waiver, that in no way it can be construed as a waiver of his rights to be tried fairly or to challenge evidence presented or admitted to this court at any time during his trial. Having seen the medical report of the accused Nun Chi by the duty doctor for the accused at the ECCC dated 3rd June 2015, who notes that Nun Chi has a severe back pain and has difficulty to sit and recommends that the chamber shall allow him to follow the proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs. Based on the above information and pursuant to Rule 815 of the ECCC internal rules, the chamber grants no his request to follow the proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs Why an audiovisual means. The AV unit personnel are instructed to link the proceedings to the room downstairs so that no chief can follow the proceedings remotely. That applies for the whole day. The chamber now hands the floor to the co-prosecutors to continue putting questions to the witness. And I notice that Council Corporate is on his feet. Do uh, you have the floor, Council? Um, thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honours. Um, I have only a very small request for clarification. Um, the next witness is uh, TCW887. Um, is that the only witness this week? Um, because we noted somewhere that TCW855 um, might have been a reserve witness as well this week. Um, so the request is, is it only 887? Uh, who is coming this week?
The uh, chamber actually uh, informs the uh, parties via an email on this matter. Informe les parties par email. For this week, we hear the testimony of this uh, witness semaine, and a, another witness that is through TCW 887. 887. As uh, are their witnesses have some personal matters to Les attend during this week and uh, they cannot uh, come to testify. And of course, the uh, party will be notified once again when the, those witnesses are available. And after the next witness, we will hear testimonies of our witnesses regarding the Kampong Chang Airport website. And for the remaining witnesses for the first January Dam work site, we continue to hear their testimonies before the conclusion of uh, before the end of June. And now the uh, deputy co-prosecutor, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, good morning to Mr. President, Your Honours. Council and everyone in and around the courtroom, and good morning also to you, Mr. Utsang. At the end of the day yesterday, we were talking about the special unit for lazy people that you described in your statement. And I think what you said was that when the members of this unit were whipped by their unit chiefs, they were lined up so that other workers could watch. Is that correct? Did I understand your testimony correctly? Yes, that is correct. And I think you also told us that they suffered no major injuries. Do you know whether they suffered minor injuries like bruises, cuts, welts, anything of that nature? Of course, uh, there were whipping marks on the lower part of uh, the uh, leg. However, that was kind of a, a minor injury. And how did you feel when you were watching these workers being whipped by their unit chiefs? We were afraid, and we tried our best to adhere to the regulations and the disciplines within the group and the unit. I think you also, I, I asked you whether you talked to any of your fellow workers about these whippings and you said that these matters could not be discussed with other workers. Why couldn't these matters be discussed with your other workers, that is, the whippings? We were allowed to uh, watch what happened, but if we were to discuss the matter, then we were considered making a mistake. And what would happen if you made a mistake in that way by discussing the matter? If we spoke about it or we uh, joked about it with our work colleagues, we would feel that we would have the, 
the feeling that uh, the fear would remain with us as we did not know that uh, someone La overheard uh, what we thought. So usually we resorted to the phrase in Khmer which says that we uh, plant the kapok tree. Nous it means we keep our mouth shut. I'm going to read something else from your statement. Uh, this is Khmer page 00. 2714070 English 0028-2355 and French 0048-2932-33. And this is what you said about the people who were being whipped. You said they had nothing to eat, so they had no strength to work. What did you mean by that? It was uh, typical for those workers who were placed in the special unit as their food ration was less than the food ration for the ordinary workers. So their food ration was less, and I think you also told us yesterday that their uh, workload was more. Is that correct? Yes, indeed, uh, they, their workload were small. I think you also told us yesterday that you took part, well, that you attended at least so criticism meetings, and that these, that this special unit for lazy people was discussed at the criticism meeting. Can you tell us what was said about the special unit for lazy people at the criticism meetings? In each unit, by the end of the working hours, which was around 5 or 5.30 p.m., a criticism and self-criticism meeting was held, but it seems that None of the workers dared uh, to uh, express their criticism as they, they feared uh, they would be retaliated. Of course, we were given the right to, to criticize someone, but it, it was us who didn't dare to do so. And what we did at the time of the meeting, we were just uh, sitting and listening to the plan or instructions from our unit chief. And during the course of those meetings, did the unit chief tell you anything about the special unit for, for lazy workers? Special for les personnes paresseuses? I cannot recall it. However, during the criticism and self-criticism meeting, we were told and the same message was repeated that we had to strive to work harder in order to achieve the work plan. So going back to the, the whippings that you described, uh, you said that they were carried out by the two unit chiefs of this special unit, one male and one female. Did you ever see any authority figure try to stop these whippings from taking place? I didn't know. I didn't know about uh, that affair. Did you ever hear about the unit chiefs being punished or disciplined in any way for beating their workers? I never heard about that. 
and uh, when they had parler. their uh, meetings, they had it at a different uh, location. And however, when they were meeting after the workers, we could uh, see it. Did you ever hear any announcements over the loudspeakers at the work site saying that it was unacceptable for unit chiefs to beat their workers? No, there was no announcement. However, uh, quite a similar message was integrated into uh, the revolutionary songs. Uh, can you tell us what that message is in the revolutionary songs that you've just described? From my recollection, it was about the uh, the struggle and the resistance of uh, the uh, combatants at the uh, battlefields, and it's about uh, the the commitment of those combatants in their attacked at the battlefield, for example, at Tropean Green, and that kind of message was played over the loudspeaker. Okay, thank you. I'd like to turn now to the topic of the disappearances during night work. You mentioned those briefly yesterday, but I'd like to go into a bit more detail. And I will start by reading a quote from your statement. This is page 0027-1408 in Khmer. In English, page 0028-2355. And in French, page 0048-2933. And this is what you said. You said, quote, night work was a special thing because people disappeared from the other units during night. I saw them call people away at night. Then the next morning, I heard that people had been killed and thrown into a well. People who were called and taken away during the night were never seen to return. At the night work site, if they called someone a short distance away, about 4 to 10 meters, we would not be able to see, and it was an easy thing to arrest someone. I was very frightened then. I did not know when my turn would come." Unquote. Now, I think I heard you say yesterday that this happened on only one occasion that you recall. Is that correct? Did this happen on just one occasion, or did it happen on more than one occasion? From my recollection, my unit was working near workers from the new village, and they were the 17 April people, and who had a connection with the former Lonal soldiers. During the daytime, we were working uh, near uh, each other, and at night time, the militia called a few workers uh, to go with them. We knew that uh, they had uh, some issues, but we didn't know what were the issues. We didn't know where they were taken away and killed. And what you said, Question. I think, was that Vous avez dit, il me semble, you heard the next morning that they had been killed and thrown into a well. Who, who did you hear that from? Who told you that?
It just happens that the chief of the duty unit. Le chef de l'unité des jeunes. And allow me to say that there were also militia for the youth unit. Il y avait également des miliciens pour l'unité des jeunes. They actually were speaking uh, to each other, and I overheard that uh, they said that the f those few workers had been put in a well. Quelques travailleurs avaient été jetés dans un puits. And just to be clear, that conversation was between the chief of the youth unit and a member of the militia for the youth unit. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Do you remember how many people were taken away on that occasion? I am not sure on the number, however, I saw two to three workers uh, walked away, and that uh, raised my uh, concern. You also said, quote, I was very frightened. I did not know when my turn would come, unquote. Why were you frightened that your turn might come? At that time, uh, we lived, or we survived, day by day. À cette époque -là, nous survivions when jour we le jour. woke up in the morning, we uh, matin, knew for sure that we lived for that day. Nous savions que nous and that's what happened. Vivre, que nous vivre, en tout cas une voilà you've you've question. mentioned that uh, these people, Vous avez dit que ces personnes, I think, were called away by the militia. Can you tell us generally, were there uh, militiamen or soldiers present at the work site on a regular basis? We could not know whether uh, they were militia. Nous ne pouvions pas savoir s'il y avait des militiens. We all dressed in the black clad uniform. Tous habillés en uniforme noir. Were there armed armed men or women, uh, people with rifles or other weapons present at the work site on a regular basis? armes sur le site présent régulièrement. There were no soldiers uh, armed uh, with the uh, fire armed there. Portant une arme à feu. And we could not distinguish anyone was a militiaman or not. Et nous ne pouvions pas distinguer si une personne était militia ou non. I'd like to turn to another portion of your interview, and I will again start with a quote and then ask you from qu some questions. The page number here is in Kamai, 0027-1410, in English, 0028-2356, in French, 0048-2934-35. And I'll read you both the question and your answer. You were asked, quote, why were you constantly afraid that they would kill you, unquote. And this was your answer. Quote, because if we did not work, following instructions closely, we prepared ourselves to die. In the sub-district, there were security personnel who monitored. They carried clubs and knives, and the knives were covered with dried blood. So on our own, we became afraid of dying." Unquote. Can you tell us where and when you saw these security personnel carrying clubs and knives covered with dried blood. Porter des matraques ou des bâtons ainsi que des couteaux tachés de sang coagulé.
for a uh, period of time at the first general website pendant un certain temps the cooperative chief requested to site du barrage have du us transfer to work at the village est-ce que nous soyons transférés vers le village and at the village we frequently uh, met with uh, the executioner by the name of long who also resided in that village. Il and dans ce village. everywhere he went, he would have his club with him all the time. Tout le temps. And do you know what position Question the person you've vous? just described uh, held, or what unit he belonged to, if any? Et quelle arme il portait également, s'il en portait une. He was chief of the uh, militiamen in the uh, commune and in commune. Uh, that is in a compound uh, commune. I did not know how many militiamen worked under him, and I only uh, knew that he was the chief of the uh, militiamen, and his name uh, was Lun. So other than that specific example, um, did you see other security personnel armed with clubs or knives? As for others, they didn't carry clubs or a knife with them. And you said that the security personnel were monitoring. What exactly did you mean by that? In each village, there were covered militiamen who monitored the activities of the villagers as uh, they were eavesdropping under the house. In particular, the 73 people were the target. They uh, monitored the conversation of those 17 every people and uh, in, in particular whether they were uh, speaking about the food or about the gruel. Okay, I'd, I'd like to return to this person you've just mentioned uh, named Lun. Um, and I'd like to read something uh, that you say about him in your statement. And the page reference here is Kamai 00271440, English 00282357, and French 00482935. And this is what you said about him, quote, there was a chief executioner named Lun he had a bicycle, and he carried a sword on his bicycle. And then you say where he's living today. And then in 1970, you go on to say, in 1979, when the Vietnamese arrived, he was arrested and imprisoned. That's why he's still alive. Otherwise, the people certainly would have killed him without fail. He just arrived to live there several years ago. In that era, he was the chief of the Kampong Khmer Subdistrict Militia. Now, in this quote, and I think also just a moment ago, you referred to him as, well, in this quote, you called him a chief executioner. Uh, a moment ago, you called him the executioner. Why do you describe him as the executioner? You have qualified him as a bureau. Why do you think he is a bureau? Pro 
Because he was the chief of militia, militia in the Kampong Tmor commune. C'était le chef des miliciens dans la commune de Kampong Tmor. As I stated earlier, there were knives Comme je déjà dit, and swords with a dry blood. Nous pouvions Along voir des uh, with him couteaux, while des épées, he was on a bicycle. Everyone was, up, was afraid of him. Lorsqu'il arrivait à bicyclette, tout le monde avait peur de lui. So am I understanding you correctly that you describe si him compris, as an executioner because you saw him bourreau, with these weapons with dried blood on them in his possession? Is that the basis of, of your sang. description of him Et as bien, executioner? Cela? Bye. Answer, yes, that is correct. Réponse, oui, c'est exact. And you've described him as the uh, Kampong Tma sub-district militia chief. How did you know that he had that position? Du quartier de Kampong Tma. Comment l'avez-vous appris? Because in Kampong Tma sub-district, there was réponse. only him Il n'y avait que lui who pour ce showed de people Il avait que lui his uh, influence and he had a weapon such as sword and knives. Son influence et qui portait ses épées the et way ses he couteaux. acted uh, was to show that he was a strong man. La façon dont il se comportait montrait did bien you ever see him at the first January Dam work site, or did he have any role there, to the Question. best of your knowledge? L'avez-vous vu sur le chantier du barrage du 1er janvier, et savez-vous s'il y jouait un rôle particulier? Answer. He rarely went to the first January dam site. Most of the time, he would stay in the village where there were many 17 April people. So he mostly was in the village to watch over the 17 April people. Were you aware of him having any role in arrests? Avez-vous entendu dire qu'il avait joué un rôle en matière d'exécution, d'arrestation, pardon? Answer, I do not know about it. Réponse, je n'en sais rien. Uh, I do not know his position, but from the, what we saw, he was the outstanding man in Kampung Tmor sub-districts. Mais c'était quelqu'un d'éminent dans le sous-district. Mr. President, uh, with the Chamber's leave, I'd like to show a document Question. to this witness. Uh, Témoin, si the document is D166-156. I, I believe that it contains uh, a description of the person that the witness has just been talking about. And I would ask du, that he look simply témoin. at the personal identifying information in this document to confirm that this is in fact the person he's just been speaking of. President, thank you. President, but uh, merci. first, uh, Mr. Cope, you Avant cela, can proceed. Thank you, Mr. Mr. President. Um, I object um, to Objection. the prosecution uh, showing this document to the witness. Um, first of all, because I'm sure he has not anything to say from his own knowledge about the document, but more importantly, uh, we have just established that Loom has nothing to do uh, with the first January Dam work site. Uh, it's very interesting what the witness has to say about uh, Mr. Loom, um, but it's, um, it doesn't fall in the segment of this trial. We're dealing with the first January Dam and the working conditions there. Um, if there's no connection whatsoever between si Loom and the first January Dam, then any questions in this line are out of the second of this uh, trial or out of the 
scope of the trial altogether. That's why I object. Ne relève pas de la portée de ce segment du procès. Mr. President, if I could just respond briefly. Monsieur le Président, permettez-moi de First of all, brièvement. we believe that this person may be an upcoming tout, witness in this case. For that reason, it would be important to establish that the person this witness is talking about is exactly the person we think may be coming to testify. As to the relevance point, I, that's, that's one aspect of relevance, of course. Voilà pourquoi, uh, As to the remaining relevance point, um, the connection in our submission between this commune and the dam were close enough that in the same way that Wat Baraitshuan Dek was almost inherently a part of the dam site, evidence about things that happened in this commune are at the very least relevant to what happened at the dam site. Et à ce qui se passait sur le chantier du barrage du Just a request for clarification about Maître the first Coupé, remark. Une uh, petite précision, s'il vous plaît. Une demande d'éclaircissement. Pardonnez-moi, Monsieur le Président. This loon coming to testify? Quand pensez-vous que ce loon va venir uh, témoigner? Well, we believe that he may be 2 TCW 830. Il pourrait bien être le 2 TCW 830. And that's of Et c'est ce que j'essaie d'établir en montrant ce document au témoin ou en voulant lui montrer en tout cas. President, you may not proceed. Uh, le président. Someone. Council, thank you very Allez much, Mr. Kong President. Kong from what Kong I Kong heard. Kong Merci, Monsieur from le Président. The witness, witness stated la presse que j'ai entendue, the individual de la by the name Lun, and it appeared that uh, Lun mentioned by uh, the witness uh, is different from uh, the witness, which uh, was said that he was uh, going to testify before this court, because the witness said that uh, Lun is already deceased. President, Deputy International Court Prosecutor, could you clarify the matter? In relation to the individual by the name Lun, whether this person is the same as the one in your document you are going to present? Your Honor, I believe that it's, it's highly likely that it is. Obviously, it's only the witness who can tell us after seeing the person's full name, which I'm trying to avoid saying, uh, seeing where he now resides, which I'm trying to avoid saying, seeing the name of his family members, which I'm also trying to avoid saying, uh, whether the person who gave this statement is in fact the same as the person that he's just been describing to us. President, the objection of the defense counsel is overruled. The president, uh, the, the chamber grants the request uh, by the deputy international co-prosecutor and court officer. You are instructed to take the document and present it to the witness. Mr. Winnes, uh, you Monsieur may Témoin, only read the name of that individual and do not disclose this name in public.
public. Et ne le mentionnez pas à haute voix. And uh, I would like to remind uh, co-prosecutor and colleague lawyer that uh, you have only one session this morning. So from now on, you still have about 30 minutes to conclude your line of questioning. Pour conclure votre interrogatoire. So, Mr. Utseng, if you've had a chance to look at the highlighted Utseng, name and the highlighted paragraph in that statement, if you could please not mention the full name, not mention any of the other identifying details, but just tell us whether this is the same person you've just been describing to us. Oui, mais, yeah, it is uh, that person. Oui, c'est bien la même personne. Thank you, and perhaps the document should now be recovered from Merci, the witness. Merci, parce que l'on peut maintenant faire rendre ce Bye. document par le témoin. President Corrupisa, please uh, recover the document and Monsieur give it to the co-prosecutor. Reprendre ce document et le remettre à l'accusation. Thank you. L'accusation. Merci. Mr. Utsing, I'd now like to turn to a, a different topic, to Barai Chondek Pagoda. Can you tell us what it was and what it was used for during your time at the 1st January Dam work site? Answer. In that period, I did not know Réponse. about uh, Barai Chondai Pagoda. En ce temps-là, je ne connaissais pas la pagode de Barai Chondai. I only knew in 1979 that Barai Chondai Pagoda was the place where people were killed. C'est à ce moment-là que j'ai appris que Barai Chondai était l'endroit où les gens étaient exécutés. And how did you learn that in 1979? Et comment l'avez-vous appris en 1979? Answer. I Réponse. knew it because at that time people went to dig the grave in order to find the gold. Je l'ai appris parce que ce moment-là, les gens sont allés exhumer des tombes pour trouver de l'or. And can you be a bit more specific when you say that they were digging graves to find gold? Question. Que voulez-vous dire lorsque vous dites qu'ils exhumaient des tombes pour y trouver de l'or? Answer. In 1979, people living in Barai Chondai or from elsewhere were there and dig up uh, the dead body uh, from the grave in order to find the uh, valuable belongings. And uh, at that time, uh, people were saying that uh, they could uh, find uh, gold at that place. So everyone uh, went there to dig the grave. I just like to quickly read something from your statement about the Wat Barai Chon Chondai. Come uh, I page number 0027-1409, English 0028-2355-56, and French 0048-2934. Quote, there was another major killing site at Barai Chuan Daik da Pagoda. They played loudspeakers there while people were being killed. They brought the people to the front of the pagoda and killed them right there. 
c'est là qu'il les c'est là qu'il les tuait. Can you tell us how you know that people were killed in front of the pagoda? How did you learn that? Pourriez-vous nous dire comment vous avez appris que les gens étaient exécutés en face de cette pagode? Answer. I was in Santok area Réponse. at dans the time on the other side of the river. De l'autre côté de la rivière. When I came to ten cows and cattle, I heard the uh, music played over the loudspeakers. It was so loud, par, and I could not. Cette no, musique était très what was forte. going on there? Je, mais je ne savais But, pas ce qui uh, se passait sur place. Those who went to ten cows and cattle Ceux with me told me that moi, uh, if the music was played over si the loudspeaker, la there would be killings. And I realized that uh, the place uh, was used to kill people because in 1979 I went to that pagoda and I saw large graves in that pagoda. And the people who were tending cows with you, Question. who told you this, did they tell you how they knew that the loudspeakers meant that killings were taking place? At that Ils m'ont dit qu'ils étaient venus s'occuper du bétail euh, à cet endroit tous les jours. And they said that they could hear the screamings. Qu'ils entendaient des cris. I just like to deal with one last topic. Question. J'aimerais aborder uh, un dernier sujet avec vous. Which is the Cham families that you mentioned in your witness interview. And the citation here is Kamai, page 0027-1411, English page 0028-2357, and French page 0048-2935. And you said, quote, The Cham people were also killed during that era. One day when I was awakening, all the Cham in my village suddenly disappeared. There were ten Cham families in my village, and of the ten families, just one person was still alive. At that time, she was away working in the district mobile unit." Unquote. First, can you tell us approximately when this occurred, this Disappearance, as you describe it. Il travaillait dans l'unité itinérante. Pourriez-vous nous en dire un peu plus à ce sujet, s'il vous plaît? Answer in Kongsau village. Dans le village de Kongsau, there were Cham families, ten families, perhaps. Environ dix familles. I uh, do not remember the statistics. One day, Je ne pas les I saw scarves, Un jour, vu des écharpes, closings, and uh, jam uh, sarongs. And that uh, they, these kind of materials uh, were given to each uh, house in the, the village. And when I uh, went to eat meals, I did not see any jams anymore. Repas, je plus vu de jam. And uh, the jam, in one jam individual, survived the period. Un seul jam and, a In 1979, when the regime collapsed, uh, régime, I uh, met uh, that individual, but uh, after that time, he went somewhere else, and uh, I have suite, never parti, met him ever since. So other than this one individual Question. from your village who Outre you met after 1979, did you ever meet or see 
any of the other Cham people from your village after 1979? Just a moment. An answer. After 1979, I met only that uh, woman. She came to find her parents. And after that time, she went elsewhere. I have never met her again. And uh, I also have never met any other Jam families after 1979. Thank you, Mr. Utsang. Uh, Mr. La President, I now pass the floor to the civil party lead co-lawyers with the chamber's leave. President, bonjour à tous. Je cède la parole à mon confrère Van Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning to everyone, and I give the floor to my learned colleague. President, you may proceed, uh, Mr. Wen Po. Good morning, Mr. President, Your Honours, everyone in and around the court. Good morning, Mr. Mr. Otsang, I have a few questions to put to you. J'aimerais vous poser quelques questions. I would like to first ask about the written record of your interview document. Votre procès verbal d'audition, document E3, 5267. Here and in Khmer, 0027-1405, English, 0028-2353-53. French, 0048-29. 31. In question and answer, you were asked uh, about the time you arrived at your birthplace. So what were you assigned to do? Your answer ce que vous avez fait en en is dans that votre after one natal, week arriving that, that, at that place, I was asked to dig a reservoir at Tang Krasang. I did not know how long I worked there. I worked at that, in that place uh, during the dry and rainy season, presentation. I would like to know when you first arrived in that area, what were you considered? Answer, in in there were no division of uh, people classes yet. Les classes n'avaient pas encore été établies. And uh, communal eating was not implemented yet. And I was assigned by my village chief to go and dig village, a reservoir with the uh, base people. Aux côtés des membres du I de was base. the 17 April person, Moi, je faisais partie du and du 17 avril. Uh, three of my uh, colleagues uh, and me uh, went to trois help the work in the village. I do not recall when uh, it was. Mais je ne me souviens pas exactement du Council, thank you. Cela produit. In relation to another document, Question, Mr. President, document D3. Sixty-six, slash seven point one point eight four eight. It is your record of interview as well. You stated that between nineteen seventy-six and seventy-seven, I was assigned by the cooperative to work in at the first January dam site in district dans le sous-district de Campontmar. Rather, it was in uh, Kampongtmo village, uh, Kampongtmo sub-district, Kampongtok district, uh, district. And you stated that uh, the, the dam belongs to uh, the zone. How did you know that? Dites que ce barrage appartenait à la zone. Comment President, appris? please uh, observe microphone, Mr. Witness. Veuillez faire attention au micro, s'il vous plaît, Monsieur le témoin. Answer. Le témoin. Le 
And uh, if we could see many worker, workers coming from uh, different uh, sectors to work in one particular dam, the dam uh, would be under the zone. Ce qui nous de so, dire que uh, because there were many zone. workers from sectors 43 and 42, that is why I said the dam was under the zone uh, responsibility. Council, you stated that uh, the dam uh, was under Question. the responsibility of uh, the zone, and uh, did you see any leaders of that zone coming to that uh, first January dam? Answer. I knew it uh, because uh, songs were played réponses, over the loudspeakers and, ont été par and uh, there was an announcement over the loudspeaker Des about uh, workers from uh, zone, On a parlé zones uh, 303 and 304. So we heard that announcement by, our, by ourselves. Council, in relation to your statement Question. provided to the co-prosecutor yesterday, I would like to have a follow-up. You stated that there were 30 members in your unit. Were there only uh, males in your unit or were there also females in your unit? Answer. We were not all from the same village. Uh, the members in the village. unit came from uh, various Membres villages, de mon unité de and we were put in the youth unit. Ils ont été dans unité des and the uh, first uh, workforce was uh, gathered, so people from villages uh, consisted of uh, male and females. Aussi bien but des uh, for des male femmes. and female workers, we uh, were grouped in uh, differently because uh, we. They were afraid of uh, the fact that there may be moral offenses. Council, you stated that the assignment was given to you, and sometime three of you would work in one group. Vous avez dit que vous travaillez par and, uh, your, the groupe de deux ou trois personnes. Vous avez parlé d'un quota de travail cubic meters. de un ou deux what happened cube. if you could not complete the work quota? Si vous ne pas respecter ce quota? Answer. The work quota received Réponse. from the youth unit, for example, sometimes we receive 30 meters of exemple, land to work on, and we had to divide that kind of am the, the amount of land received from the unit among us. Nous devions nous répartir, uh, so we parcelle. had to work on a daily basis. And as for that nous work quota, the whole group could uh, finish it by 5 p.m. in the evening. Council, I would like jour. to ask you if uh, anyone could not complete uh, the work quota, did they si have to uh, work at night time? Devait-il travailler la nuit? Answer. Réponse. Most importantly, we as a group had to help each other to complete the work assignment. So when we received the work quota, we had to complete it in, within our own group or unit. Council, yesterday you stated about the accident at work, and uh, you stated also that uh, people fainted because they were exhausted. To your observation, did this happen because of uh, their overwork or because they did not have enough food to eat? Answer. Our strength were becoming weaker and weaker from day to day because we did not have enough food to eat. Even when we relieve 
when we relieve ourselves, the, there was no bad nous, smell at all from our waste. Council, in relation to food ration, could you tell the court was the food ration hygiene enough and uh, was the surrounding area of the work site uh, clean? Answer. Réponse. If you speak about sanitation, si vous abordez la question de l'assainissement et de l'hygiène, there was no sanitation Alors, at all. Y avait pas there were many flies. Du tout. Il y avait As people relieve ourselves uh, here and there in the field or in the forest. Dans les champs ou dans la forêt. Questioned. Question. In your response to the co prosecutor's question yesterday regarding the resting time, you said that there were some vous short breaks. Y avait and only in at the end of the working hours, you could rest at the sleeping quarter. How far was the sleeping quarter from your actual work site? À quelle distance se trouvait le dortoir du site où vous travaillez? Answer. For our duty unit, pour notre unité des the jeunes, sleeping uh, quarter was about two to three hundred meters, le dortoir se trouvait and we actually à had to first go to the uh, Il kitchen area where we had our gruel and then we continued to the sleeping quarter to rest. Question, ensuite, can you tell us the uh, condition of the sleeping uh, quarter or the bedding itself and were you provided with, with a mosquito net or a mat, sleeping mat? Answer. The building was uh, long, about 100 meters long, and we would uh, sleep in two rows. However, the roof was fully covered. We slept on a floor which was uh, made of small uh, trees, and we had to find our own means of uh, getting a mat or a mosquito net. And the most important thing is for us to keep our own eating container and a spoon, as well as the working equipment, including basket and hose. Question, how many pairs or set of clothing did you receive while you were working there? Tenue receviez-vous lorsque vous travaillez là-bas? The 17 April people were not entitled to any distribution through uh, new clothes or uh, flip-flops. They only had a pair of clothing that they were wearing. Question, uh, Mr. President, I'd like to uh, quote another uh, extract from a document, which is E3-5267, and the uh, Khmer EN is uh, 0027-1407 in English, 0028-2354, and in French, 0048-2932. The question was about how the dam was built for each group, and the reply was uh, that it depends on the uh, soil condition. And when we, if we were considered to be lazy, we would be placed into a special unit for lazy workers. And if we didn't strive to work hard, we would be taken away and killed. Free translation, end quote. My question to you is the following. Before, one work, before a worker was considered a lazy worker and placed in a special unit and later maybe being sent away and killed, was that a worker sent for re-education or was he or she uh, reprimanded a few times before he or she was put into the special unit? 
on le rééduquait. And uh, for those workers, Réponse. although they were alleged to be lazy workers, and in fact, uh, they exhausted themselves from, from overwork. However, sometimes uh, went here there freely without the authorization from Anka. These people or workers uh, were gathered and placed into a unit called a special unit, and there were both male and female workers who were placed in the other unit. And they had to work harder than the ordinary workers. Question. My next question is in relation to children. From your question, observation at the work site, did you see any younger children or children under 12 or 13 years old who were assigned to work at the dam site? Que on avait, à qui President, on avait Mr. Witness, please site. observe the microphone. President, Monsieur le témoin, veuillez attendre que le microphone soit allumé. Witness. Témoin. At the first January dam work site Sur or at the um, other major uh, work sites, I uh, did not Ou see it, uh, the involvement of any children working with the adult. Usually, children were assigned to work at a village to uh, collect a cow dam, for example. Question on the issue of forced marriage. Question. In your village or at the work site, did you witness any arranged marriage? Or did the arranged marriage happen in your unit? Est-ce qu'il y a eu des mariages arrangés dans votre unité? Answer. In the Réponse. youth uh, unit, usually Anka arrange marriage for the best people only. En général, les mariages étaient arrangés par l'Anka pour les gens du peuple de base As the 17 April people les gens du peuple du 17 avril were not arranged by Anka to get married. Anka would organize a, a, a wedding or marriage ceremony for 10 or 20 couples of the best people. Usually, it uh, was held at the uh, commune, and indeed I knew that uh, such arranged marriage took place, although I cannot say whether it was forced or not. Question. My last question is in relation to the death of the workers. If one, if a worker died at the work site or at uh, the village, was any traditional ritual for the day allowed to be organized? Answer. For those people who died, we don't even know where their dead bodies were. We were not allowed to do to conduct any traditional uh, ritual for the dead. Even if when one's mother was sick at the uh, village, we would not be authorized to to visit because we were asked whether we were a, a medic or not. And if we were not, then we would not be allowed to visit. Council, thank you, Mr. President. I am done for this witness. President, thank you. It is now convenient for a short break. We take a break now and resume at 10.30. And court officer, please assist the witness in the waiting room for the witnesses and civil parties and invite him to the courtroom at 10.30. The court is now in recess.